everyone and back with another Timax Crystal video. So this is the third test video. I did two live streams so far of F123 Auto and Ballista 2. So I'll leave a link to the playlist in the corner. But today we're checking out as a Corsa Competizione. So shout out to Pimax for loaning me this unit. I'm just going to briefly go through the settings that I've got set up and show you what it performs both natively with SteamVR and then with the OpenXR toolkit. So in terms of device settings, you just want to go over to the device settings within the Pimax tool. And then you can see I've got it set to 90 hertz. 120 hertz is available, but I'll be leaving it on 90 hertz. And under games, you'll see there's a bunch of custom presets. So if you want to launch any of these games, a simple and fast way is just to launch it from this launcher here. And if you click, say, to F123, it will give you like the recommended start settings. So we're going to have run it on a set of course competizione and the render quality, it's actually dropped it down to balance. So I think this is like the render resolution that it provides to Steam VR. So it, it tells the uh, Steam VR application that the, the resolution is actually lower than what it is to make rendering easy. But I'm going to put it back to maximum. So we should get the native render resolution available in Steam. And then we'll load up ACC and then see how it performs on some of the presets. So for the first one, I'm going to use Steam VR with FPS VR to bring up the performance data. And on the second run, I'll do it via the OpenXR toolkit, which I've got a video for, which I'll also link in the corner. So that's the way you'll want to run this. Okay, so first thing we'll do is check out settings and with it set to maximum in the Pimax app. That's the render resolution we get. So 4312 by 5100, which is a humongous resolution. So we'll have to turn down some of the settings in the game, which we will do shortly before we get going. Okay, we're now up and running at Bathurst. So I have tweaked the setting from a VR Epic. So for this quick test run, I've got the VR pixel density set to 110 from 140% because um, 140 is just overkill. And the resolution scale is set to 100, so there's no adjustment of the uh, resolution scale there. So we are super sampling slightly to 110%. And what else? Turn the mirror view distance down a little from 70 meters to 50. And the opponent visible cars, which really affects more of the CPU from 32 down to 16. So straight away the controls, nice and bright inside the car, inside the cabin very black nice and contrasting and that's pretty sharp it's not as sharp as AMS2 but this uh, this game's always had a quite a poor VR implementation so we may have better results by uh, Turning the render scale down and then doing more super sampling is basically rendering the game game scenario much bigger than the resolution of the end end resolution that you want. But we're staying under that 11.1 milliseconds now, and this is going via Steam VR. So not the most optimum way to run ACC in a plane VR. The gear's right. I highly recommend if you do play this in VR, check out my video on using the OpenXR toolkit where you install Open Composite and that allows it to be accessed by the OpenXR toolkit so you can completely bypass in VR that way. I'll run it via SteamVR as an example. How you can play this almost out of the box essentially. And it gives us the FPS VR app so you can see the performance in this mode. So you will get slightly better performance with the OpenXR toolkit and Open Composite. And then you can also use other things that aren't available currently in the SteamVR mode like uh, foveated rendering. We're here at Donington in the wet, and you can see with the same settings, we're just above 81 FPS. So we may need to lower it a bit on 
these current settings to get it down. Let's turn the scale back down. I think it's set to 90. And after using the OpenXR toolkit, and there you go, it's dropped. If we're using the OpenXR toolkit, we could enable foveated rendering. It'll give us a boost, but we'll see how that goes. Great right, FOV. Very clear, actually. Got a little CPU spike there. As I mentioned a few times, you can reduce the uh, CPU load by bypassing SteamVR with the OpenXR toolkit. Nice okay. headset does have eye tracking, but it's not yet enabled for the public or the version I've got. So you need to be on the beta testing program to have access to it. So this is really testing what if, um, if you were to order one. These are the options available in it. But the eye tracking in conjunction with foveated rendering will give you a, a GPU performance boost. It won't help you in the CPU area, but I'm using the AMD 7800X3D, which is currently the best CPU for this game. Right, we're now at Brands Hatch, same settings as before, this time in the drive clear weather. Another useful feature of the OpenXL Toolkit is the uh, this PAF sharpening. Contrast adaptive sharpening. Oh, I can't remember what the A is. That really helps to sharpen this game up. I don't know the AI here, that was a bit of a traffic jam. And they're uh, speed up. Oh, a bit of a CPU spike there. You can tell on the uh, performance indicator on the right side, have a red line. Okay, so next we're going to try ACC using the OpenXR toolkit. So, what you'll need installed, you'll need um, the Pimax XR runtime, which is basically the Open XR runtime for Pimax. So I believe it's not officially called an OpenXR runtime for licensing reasons. This is essentially it. Now, when you've got this installed and open, you can see what the resolution is set to on the headset here, which could be dictated to by the radio buttons that you've picked over on this side. So I've also got the OpenXR toolkit, which I've made a video for previously. Uh, so in order to run ACC in OpenXR mode, we need to have Open Composite up and running. So I'll just fire it up here and we'll go switch to Open Composite mode and then that's it. Job done. All we need to do is start the game. So if we go to a set of course called Tyranny Start, it should just fire up now in OpenXR, OpenXR mode. So we've got the OpenXR toolkit all fired up. And the first thing I noticed was the FPS in the top corner, drop down to 45 uh, frames per second using the same video configuration that I had for the Steam VR uh, test, which was a bit strange because it, it should be more performant. And what I also noticed is that it was like razor sharp, like really sharp. So I think there's possibly some sort of resolution um, difference between the two modes. I don't know why one would be different to the other. Um, but what I've done is I've gone into the video preset that I used before and I've dropped the resolution scale down to 75. That's effectively telling the game that the resolution of the headset is smaller and the uh, VR pixel density, which is like the super sampling, I've left at 100. So I believe this is like the native resolution at 75% now, but it looks really sharp still. And we now have the benefit of using some of the features from the OpenXR toolkit. So I'll just bring these up uh, from my keyboard. So if we just look at the settings that I've got here, override resolution, no. So I'm not changing the resolution here, so it can't be that. And then I've got the advanced overlay for the FPS data up. 
I've got the uh, contrast adaptive sharpening on and I've set it to 40% and then foveated rendering I've got enabled so you'll be able to see on the uh, Pimax XR preview screen which is what you're seeing now that's why it's like a I think it's the left eye you're seeing you can see it on the outer edges it's sort of pixelated so you'll be able to enable this from day one even without the eye tracking once eye tracking is available you'll be able to go into this setting and enable it and then wherever you're looking it should sharpen in the direction in which your eyes are pointing at but we can't use this yet at least in the uh, version of the Pimax firmware and software that I've got installed at the minute so I'll leave that on off uh, turbo mode I've got on off and I think that was it so those are the settings that I'd recommend if you pick yourself up a Pimax crystal and you get one in the coming days um, right I think that's it so with that we'll jump back to Brands Hatch and I'll go back through the courses in reverse order so you can see what the performance is like so this does look a lot better than it did uh, compared to how I had it on SteamVR I think in the um, sharpening filter made a big difference if he's looking closer to what it looks like in AMS2 now where on the Steam VR version I think I did mention it, does, it didn't look as good as AMS2 but this made a big difference so GPU time about 10 milliseconds. Just why we want it. We want it to be under that 11.1 to hit 90 FPS. But we're, we're close. We're at 86, 88. Probably as the cars spread out. I'll get closer to 90. Looks like it's in there now. Maybe reducing that render scale down a little bit more from 75 to 70 might as well, might lock us at 90 but visually this looks smooth to me in the headset yeah this drops down to 70 I think people um, on the G2 will be happy with the results you will need a, a powerful GPU to render this to make the most of it. Yeah, that's definitely sharper than what it was compared to Steam VR. Frame time, top right. <laughs> Hear that AMG. go we've got two video settings I might shove those up on Google Drive if anyone wants to refer to them and yeah that was the uh, Pimax Crystal on a set of course of competencioni don't forget you found this video useful leave a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one